Welcome back. Today we'll be talking about tetracyclines, and we'll use a bunch of mnemonics to help us memorize everything. Medications are tetracycline, doxycycline, and minocycline. So ones that end with the word cycline. To remember the indications, remember to vacuum the bedroom. And pay close attention to doxycycline because it can also be used to treat MRSA. The tetracyclines are bacteriostatic, so they inhibit bacterial growth. That's why we cannot give them along with penicillins because penicillin depend on bacterial growth. The mechanism of action is very simple. They inhibit the RNA binding to the bacterial ribosome. And it's also very important to know that doxycycline can also be used in patients with renal failure because it's fecally excreted. So far, doxycycline is the favorite drug of the group. To remember the side effects, remember that tetracycline can be used to prevent pelvic inflammatory disease or PID. So they cause photosensitivity, inhibition of bone growth, and discoloration of the teeth. However, we only see inhibition of growth or discoloration of the teeth in the newborns if the mother was taking tetracycline. So yes, tetracyclines are teratogenic. Mechanism of resistance is plasmid-coded efflux of the drug and decrease intake. Remember, the bacteria has its DNA in two parts, the chromosomes and the plasmid. The chromosomal DNA usually regulates the bacterial growth and metabolism. And plasmid DNA regulates drug resistance. It's also very important to know that you cannot take citrocycline with calcium, iron, or antiacids. So if you're taking tetracycline or giving tetracycline to your patients, remember no milk, no iron supplementation, and no magnesium as well. And here's a very small quiz. So which tetracycline is safe in renal failure patients? Alright guys, that's everything I've got. Hopefully I made this easier for you. Thanks a ton for watching and I'll see you guys later.